Hi everyone, welcome to my Sherline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik. Behind the camera is Joshua Blanc. Today we're continuing on with Innovo. I don't want to call it Novo, but it's Innovo Art. And it's Presto Foam. So we'll just take a sheet out and I'll show you. This is a six by nine plate. We have a couple here. Yep, they're quite thin as you can see. And uh, regular styrofoam like the um, meat trays are um, quite a bit thicker as you can see here. This is chicken, ground chicken, I think. <laughs> anyway, um, so they work a little bit differently. This is uh, meant for printmaking and the other of course is not. So. I've done a little study to show you that um, how both of them work um, and which is better, and um, although it's sort of relative. Now the meat tray um, does allow um, a good impression if you're pressing something down on it. Now I don't know if you remember episode 27, uh, A to C, I, can, I think there were three groups of them when we were doing doors and we did keys. And these are my little keys from uh, a little local store. It's called my own collection. So, and I'm making my own collection here of keys. <laughs> so what I did, uh, I put the keys on and we won't do this. <laughs> Josh is just about to having a fit there. Um, just to put it down and then I hammered on it to get it down. Now the impression uh, was great on the styrofoam that is a meat tray, but uh, the Presto foam, um, as you can see, I, maybe I'll hold it a little closer. I had to redraw some areas, but that's fine. And uh, we'll just get rid of these implements. And here, and then you, I did a quick print of them. All I did was just uh, have some blue and uh, I uh, on the background and then uh, I inked this plate with brown and uh, you can see the differences let's show that for the camera so of course being printmaking this was the first print and this is the second and so this is the styrofoam plate the meat tray and this is the Innov Art um, Presto foam tray and uh, or um, plate I guess we should call it and the difference is you can see it makes a deeper impression but if you see these lines are quite thick so and this is the ghost print um, the Innova art you can see has some really nice delicate line work so and this is really where it's at so that's why um, I mean certainly you can use these if you haven't got you know, haven't sent for the uh, uh, Presto foam, but um, you know, for more delicate line and more um, you know differences, just use you know the Presto foam, and it's it's good. Okay, so we're just gonna do a simple run. Uh, we're gonna do it on black paper. Um, not sure it will work all that well. I don't know how well the keys will show up, but we'll give it a shot. It's sort of a fine line as to how much color you put on there. And just straight run over it and um, the line shouldn't be obscured with color too much. Or you won't get that black outline that we want. Now push hard. Make sure it's making a good impression. You might brayer the back maybe. Make sure it's solid on there or it might slip if it has too much paint. So let's see here. It's looking not too bad. And I've tried it with some craft paper and it wasn't all that successful. But this is a smoother, more of a cardstock. So let's hope that uh, 
we get a better impression. And this this way isn't really what we're after. I want to do more of the intaglio thing, but this is like a fast intaglio. And it's not about impression. Um, it's obscured some of the lines with color. Really, I wanted more black, but you can see the keys. Now, obviously, uh, when we were talking earlier about the meat tray, that the meat tray will depress a little bit deeper and you're not going to get ink into those grooves as much. So that works not too badly, but it could be better. Okay, so let's do it the other way. They clean up really well. Now be sure and work on the smooth surface. There's a reason for that. It just seems uh, when you're putting your paint on, say with a credit card or something else, that it just holds the paint better and prints better. So I'm adding a little bit of medium, our usual uh, glazing medium. And just rolling it out just to get it to a consistency. Okay, so you got your credit card and just take a roll like this. And probably wise to put it on a background so you don't muck up your working surface. And then just roll it on. And what you want now is for the paint to actually sit in those grooves. So this is much more intaglio style. And then you actually, and then this is, uh, at the beginning I talked about keeping um, the working surface on the shiny side. Well, this is why, because it will scrape off the paint really nicely. And I've added a bit of medium so that we have a bit of working time. Place it on your plate. Push hard. Make sure all those little lines are down there. Looks good so far. This is a eight and a half by 11 cardstock sheet. Yes, success <laughs> at long last. <laughs> okay, so that's what you're going for. Now we're going to put the paper down again and see if we can get anything for a ghost print. Now sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. Now that's the joy of printmaking, it's keep your fingers crossed and you hope for the best. Sometimes it works beautifully, sometimes it's just so discouraging. No, our ghost print is not much of anything, but we really did get a nice impression on this one. Uh, we lost a little bit of the lines at the top, but maybe I didn't hammer that enough. <laughs> Phew, okay, on to the next one. <laughs> So continuing work uh, with the Jack Shadbolt idea, uh, I have this butterfly drawing. And uh, we just take this down a little bit. And I have my plate over top and we're going to do this a relatively quick way. You can do it by holding it to a, a window if you don't have a light box. I've got my light box on. And I've got my drawing, it's um, you know reasonably obscure. I'm just going to do the outline. I'm using the largest ball that I have on these little styluses. And uh, so, now the other way you can do it, of course, is to do your drawing 
and then uh, on tracing paper and then trace it off and then put the tracing paper on top of your butterfly and then uh, just trace it off and then you have to redraw the, um, the lines Take this little piece of tape off. Now, anything you uh, depress like this is going to stay the color of the paper. And I'm not seeing a lot of the, the shapes that clearly, but it's fine. Sometimes, um, you know, just letting yourself run with it. is way more interesting than following a pattern slavishly. And you can sort of make it up as you go. So I'm just gonna take it off. I can draw the details in. Fairly quickly. So you can see this stuff is really fun to work with. It will take line really well. Here's his eyes, or her eyes. Now whatever you shape you do draw um, will print, so just be aware of that. And uh, let's put some circles. You know, now you can play with it. That's the fun part. Start doing patterns and things. Do some shapes here. Now the butterfly has all these veins and things, so you can get quite creative with that. I kind of thought my drawing was a bit stiff, so you just want to counteract that. There's actually a butterfly that's totally transparent, it's very beautiful. Don't forget he's got antenna, I didn't draw it in. Because we're not cutting it, we don't have to worry about the antenna. And maybe use a little, for little circles. And let's try some cross hatching to see uh, cross hatching is often used um, in woodcuts as a way to put in shadow or darker areas. In this case, it'll probably just be a decorative feature. So then in the background, um, you can do impressions with other tools. 
you know, add some something interesting. You can do lines. Maybe like what squeaks? <laughs> I didn't know it was gonna squeak. This may not show up, but you we can try it just to see. And maybe some little wavy things up here. Just to show you what this, the foam will do. It's not about creating a wonderful piece of art at this point. It's experimentation with this particular medium. So, getting to the inking stage. We'll try running it just as straight color. Uh, I'm changing to my um, 8 by 10 plate here. So we're going to do this first on white paper and then on the black. And we just take our credit card. It's probably the most use it's ever seen. <laughs> So we'll see if those nice little lines print. And scrape off as much as I can here. I'm just really gonna Put some weight down. And let's see if it... I'm not sure that first one did all that well. Sometimes you just need to condition your plate. I'm going to re-ink because I don't think it really got that first impression. Once it's on there, it sticks. I think with, with this plate, it sticks on better. Uh, this is a gel press plate. And that looks like it might be better. Just try. Let's try a little bit of medium to see if there's a difference. We'll be artistic scientists here. And hold your plate carefully because uh, if your nails go into it, it will impress a line. We'll see what happens. And this will be on white paper. <laughs> That's much more successful. See, as the plate gets more conditioned, now we're going to let this dry because uh, I want to run another, because we're on white paper, um, we're going to actually put a background color on. So ready to run this uh, background color and everything reverses of course uh, your first color is actually going to be on top so this is just a pickup layer and we'll keep it fairly light And then print 
trick. Okay, then we might have to use our glazing medium to pick it all up. And there's our butterfly. Oops, a little bit more about them here. Yeah, if you don't take it off the um, gel plate totally, sometimes you can remedy that with a little bit of medium and it'll pick it up. Things will dry. Pretty good now. Okay. So, um, what happens is that um, the butterfly will show up more as it dries, so it needs to dry. And most of it's pretty good. Okay, let's run that. Let's put a lot of weight in it. And we'll see how it prints on the black paper. Mix the colors. Just a little bit more violet, I think. Would be nice. Okay. So we just need it to the consistency where you can scrape it on there. I'm just going to uh, clean my plate from before and we're going to take a little break. <music> So I wasn't happy with some of the lines, so I'm just going to go over a few things. Make sure it's deep enough. Don't forget these uh, Presto plates are quite thin. You could cut them. And there's a way of working with that. Um, it's called a reduction print, so as you cut them you have a layer of paint and then um, you paint over that. Maybe we'll show that next time. And I think we had some circles that definitely needed some work. Our eyes, you can actually um, push down the eyes quite a bit. And then the mouthpieces. I don't think our antenna showed up very much. There we go. I'm keeping this very light. I have a fair amount of uh, white in this color. And we'll scrape it on. I'm not going to scrape it off as much as before because we're working on black paper, so I want some of the color to show. And I have got some silver in there, so it should have a bit of a sheen. And we'll just center it. Take it off carefully. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to add a few different colors here. Um, I'm just going to paint it in with a brush and probably the orange would be nice. And the rest of it will dry as I'm doing that. So. Um, I will start and then we'll go do a little interlude because this will have to dry. So all I'm doing is adding little touches of paint here and there.
Okay, we just waited for the butterfly to dry. I added a bit of orange and yellow to see what happens there. Okay, we're going to do a... All I'm going to do is a glazing medium here. And then we're going to print on black paper. And this might take time. So I'd love to show you how this turned out, but it's still drying. So it's going to take a few hours and uh, we'll put it at the end of the video. So it will be a nice surprise then. <laughs> so thanks so much for watching. It's been great fun here at Sherline Studio again. And uh, be sure to like and subscribe as always. We really appreciate uh, all our many fans now. It's, it's getting up there. So <laughs> take care and bye for now.